This week's tip is about how to seam double rib, a pattern where you have knit to, purl to, ribbing. And I'm not going to be demonstrating how to actually seam it because the technique is exactly the same as for seaming knit one, purl one ribbing, where the difference lies in how to set up your stitches so that the pattern is maintained over the seam. Now if you look at a pattern where knit two, purl two ribbing is uh, required for the bottom band or where something's going to be seamed, the first thing you want to do is check to see that the pattern is a multiple of four. So I've got knit two, purl two, that's what it takes to complete the pattern. And if it's going to be seamed, I need to have something at the other end that's going to finish it off. I need to have so that the pattern be can, can be continued. Knit two, well actually let's flip it over here. Knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two. There's my multiple of floor, plus two. So the first thing you need to do is check and see if the pattern has a multiple of four plus two stitches because then you'll be able to seam it. Now, if you do not have a multiple of four plus the extra two stitches, you're not going to be able to seam it. Because think of it this way, if I didn't have these knit stitches here, if it ended right here, knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, that's my multiple of four. And then on the other side, I had the same thing. I would be placing my seam on one side of that purl stitch and on one side of this knit stitch. So I'd have knit two, purl two, knit two, purl one, knit one, purl two. And it looks um, homemade rather than handmade. So what I want to do is have a multiple of four plus two. Now when I seam, if I have it set up this way where most patterns, this is what they'll call for, knit purl, two purl, with the two purls on the end. When I line up for my seam, I'm going to be placing my seam after the last column of stitches next to the selvage and after the selvage stitches. So my pattern will be purl two, knit two, a knit from either, from each piece, purl two. And that's what I have in this situation. And you can see that this looks pretty nice. Now it's not as elastic, okay, when you place it this way. And if you have an issue with the appearance of uh, stitches next to your selvage, and look at this one, you know, see how the stitches are kind of over large and ugly? That's going to be an ugly seam because that's what I would have on either side. So not my favorite way to do it, a perfectly acceptable way, but not my favorite way to do it. My favorite way to do it is to place the selvage, place the seam where it is in the ditch, to borrow a quilting term, where I place it next to the knit stitch and next to the purl stitches. So I have knit two, purl two, knit two, and the pattern is continued on. And it is virtually invisible. You can't see it at all. Now the problem is, is that you will not find patterns set up this way. You have to do this on your own. And if you want to think of it this way, I've got the multiple of four plus two, okay? Knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two. And then I have those extra stitches at the end, the knit two. If I take one of those stitches and add it to the front of the piece, so I have my selvage stitch, knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, and then that other stitch from the plus two, then I can seam it and it will be in the ditch. Because what I would do is I would seam this one next to this one and my pattern would continue knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, and the seam would be in the ditch and it would be virtually invisible. Now in the blog entry itself I'm going to go into much more detail in this and how you set it up and the various examples and so on, but I'm not going to do that in the, uh, the video. And if you want to know actually how to seam these things, uh, look at last week's video because the process is exactly the same. The difference is in the setup.